Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning study. Um, this is, of course, last morning study of the week. And uh, often what I try to do is give a little bit of an overview um, of what we've been studying, especially if it's been uh, rather confusing. So before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we are thankful for all the things that you do in our lives, and we ask for your care and protection as we continue uh, uh, to seek your face and to and for you to reveal the things in our lives that need to change. Uh, we pray for each person studying these things, and we just ask that you can help us all uh, to understand the truths being revealed. I pray that you can be with us now through your spirit in this study, that you can impress our minds, that you can draw us close to you, and that the things that we study, even though they may seem a little bit esoteric, uh, that they can have a meaning and a purpose in our lives, and that they can unfold a light for our feet that we can see and help us to make decisions as we go through our life on this earth. Make decisions, Lord, that will further uh, your kingdom. Be with us now, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so good morning once again. Now, um, we're not going to be studying Genesis chapter 49, even if it's on your screen. I was looking at that, and you, you'll see why in a, in a moment, uh, why I'm looking at that. But we have been looking at uh, Daniel chapter 11. Now, for those who have been, uh, you know, following these studies closely, uh, you will know why we had, where, why we're still here uh, dealing with uh, the end of the Greek kingdom and the, and the rise of Rome. And so when we were looking at these civil wars uh, or this civil war in Greece uh, between the north and the south after the fall of Alexander's kingdom, um, we came to recognize that this north-south battle symbolizes uh, what's happening in the present. But we know that the key to the present is the past. And so we spent time looking at uh, the civil war that happened in 977 BC when the United Kingdom of Israel was broken into the northern and the southern kingdom. And we looked at 742, the civil war there that begins uh, the prophetic mirror. So it's very significant. And we looked at the connections between those civil wars and the American Revolution and the civil war in the 1860s in the United States. And we could see that there was definitely a structure there uh, that connected these. One is, of course, the prophetic mirror, which connects um 742 BC to 1863. But then we could look back to 977 and see the connection uh, there as well. The November 22nd, 977, the 15th day of the eighth month in which Jeroboam's offering on the altar in Bethel. And we have this prophecy of Josiah. And of course, we know that's all connected uh, to our history. It, um, uh, especially if, if we if we go back to 2018. So in 2018, I'm at the School of the Prophets. Tess is going to present uh, and Parminder the idea of time setting um, that had been accepted um, and first presented on June 10th in 2018 in um, in Italy, and uh, and then you're going to have this. Um, Unfolding of light, 391 and a half days, uh, that connects from October 13th, 2018, uh, to November 9th, 2019. And then, of course, July 18th is going to come into play as we continue to move through that history. And, um, so there was, uh, what we call a Thanksgiving Day prediction on November 24, November 22nd, 2018. That showed that we could not predict external dates, uh, but that date was, um, that prediction was buried or suppressed um, on November 10th, 2019. Three presentations were done at the School of the Prophets, two by me, one by Jeff, showing that the Thanksgiving Day prediction was based on a solid study of the scriptures 
But still, even after the event, one year after the event, we could not agree upon how to interpret the prophecy. Um, those recordings were never released of those discussions. Stephen and Odilio, uh, um, uh, Larry Hine, Bronwyn, um, I think there might have been some other people there, um, um, and Jeff and, and myself, of course, were there. Um, so, um, and, and my wife Heidi watched the first one on Skype. Um, she couldn't stomach, um, watching the second and third one. So she never did see those. But, um, anyway, these are really I important. What happened in 2018 is important. Now, as you know, we've been looking at these Hebrew numbers. The Hebrew numbers have been giving us spans of time. That is, this number of the Hebrew definitions in the Strong's Concordance. And um, some of the, the numbers that have been significant from a symbolic point of view, at least one of the numbers, uh, is this word that we see at the end of Daniel 11, verse 6, where we have the word times, and the number 6256 um, is, uh, if you multiply 6 times 2 times 5 times 6, you get 360, and the fact that that symbol is attached to the word times, which is a symbol of a prophetic year or a time, um, I think is quite significant. So it's not something that we should just uh, dismiss. And then we, we saw that we could take these verses, we could take the Hebrew numbers and they would relate to spans of time to the prophecies themselves, right? So, so it's something that we have, have accepted, um, because of its strong, uh, uh, predictive element, but also, uh, the objective nature of, of numbers. And so when we were looking at Daniel 11, 14, so that's what we've been looking at over the last week. Um, we were addressing the fact that this is the rise of Rome. Now, we know that Swearingen, in his book on uh, called The Tidings Out of the Northeast, um, where he, and we've been going through his outline of Daniel chapter 11 and changing it as we see differences in interpretation of the historic view, but also placing in that document um an application to our time. And that application to our time is looking at the North and the South in a very simplistic way. The King of the North represents apostate Protestantism, Republicanism, and the King of the South represents atheistic communism, wokeism, all these other types of isms that we would consider on the left. So, so that is how we have understood this. And then we see Rome, the robbers of thy people, exalting themselves to establish the vision. And we spent a lot of time looking at that, establishing that the, the, the pioneer understanding of that, that this is Rome. Um, this is not a Tychus Epiphanes, as Swearingen tries to uh, make it out to be, um, I think is, is pretty significant. Um, and we, we've looked at that in detail. And... Um, what it means to establish the vision and then trying to make an application to our time. And one of the keys that we just started looking at had to do with the expression in those times. So hopefully I, I put enough there for people who haven't been watching closely to at least follow what we're doing. Now, what we wanted to do is to recognize that there is this conflict between um the Democrats and the Republicans in the United States. And we're going to take the Democrats to represent the South and the Republicans to represent the North because of the Civil War in the 1860s. That was the case. And so we, we still hold that that is representative in what's happening in the United States. And we've been able to connect these um, symbols in various ways to our time. Now, one of the things that we had looked at was, um, I'm trying to find it here. So this word times, um, 
it can be translated different ways. So when we look at this uh, dictionary, so I'm just going to go there. Um, so this here, 6256. Um, time, time experiences, occurrence, occasion, right? Uh, if we look at it in Daniel chapter 11, it's going to be translated in as time in Daniel 11 verse 24. It's going to be translated as times in Daniel 11 6 and Daniel 11 14, which we're looking at right now, right? So in Daniel, it says strengthened her in these times, right? So 6256. And then, um, it's also translated as certain. Now that's in Daniel 11 verse 13. And that seems like a strange way to translate it. Um, but it's after certain years. So we looked at this after certain years. And what we did is we had taken um, 6256. And we had, so I'll show you the calculation. So I just want to review this for people. So we had taken that Hebrew number. And we know it represents 360. So we added 360 to it. And then we um, got this number 6,616. So we say it represents that. And then we added the word years, right? So after certain years, and that's 8141. We got this number, number 14,757. And, and this is quite interesting because when we looked at that number and we put it on our line, we started November 9th, 1989. And we add this together. Hopefully you can see that. I can make it bigger. Right? Um, so if we count times are certain, 2656 six plus the 360, that's 6 times 2 times 5 times 6, which is 360. We added that together. And then we um, added the word years to that. And we get 14,757 days. And this, this number is interesting because we know that 14,587 um, uh, days is that period of time that the manna fell. This happens to be 170 days longer. But it also reaches from November 9th, 1989 to April 5th, 2030. So that date that we have had uh, for quite a while now that we've looked at, it's a symbolic date uh, representing the first day of the first month. So, so that was significant. So then what we did is we, um, we looked at in Daniel 11 verse 14, where it says, and in those times, you know, so we spent yesterday going through this. Now, of course, the word those, um, it's kind of an odd way to translate this word in some ways. Uh, it, it, it's not, it's, um, I was looking up the word in, in the way that it's used. So what is it's used, they, when it's only when it's emphatic. Um, but it can be translated as it, like many, uh, they, say such, they, those, which, who, whom, without ye, right? So it's, it's almost like a, uh, you know, a personal pronoun in some ways like that, let's say like a pronoun. And then, but then it has the word times. So that word times that's translated as certain in certain years, that word times is there. And so the fact that we had that in, and after certain times and, and then, or after certain years, and now we have this word again. So I thought, well, what if we add these together? So if I do that, so I'll show you this now. So this is basically a similar diagram to just looked at. So I took those and added them together. Now this starts at what I did here is I started instead of 11.9, like I did with the 7, 14,757 days, I started at 
Now, of course, we know that November 9th and 9-11 are tied together. Um, but that's where I started to see where it would end. And it ended on April 10th, 2024. Now, April 10th, 2024 is the first day of the first month. So we can see the other one brought us to the first day of the first month in 2030. This brought us to the first day of the first month in 2024. So the fact that we can use this, these two phrases, the one in verse 13 and the one in verse 14, uh, to lead us to a first day of the first month, I think is significant, right? Now, um, now what I did is I reversed them instead of counting 1992 days and then counting the other way. I, I counted um, the 16, uh, 6,256 days, the whole times from 9-11 and arrived at October 28th, 2018. Now, um, and that's just a, an irregular cardinal count. I didn't do an inclusive count. If I did an inclusive count, it would have gone to October 27th. So I'm trying to remember how this worked because I just did this this morning. If we go to, you know, just hang on. So just checking to make sure I'm doing this correctly. Now, October 28th, 2018. If we think about that date, when is that? What's happening at that time? Now, it's going to be a Sunday, October 28th, 2018. But what, what's happening around that time in this movement? Okay. Promotion of tests. I, I guess that's one way of looking at it. Um, definitely we're dealing with the November 9th prediction. So we don't have uh, the July 18th prediction yet okay now to just kind of review that history in october 3rd you're going to have um tests presenting november 9th into two studies the 10 years and the midnight cry and then 10 days later the midnight cry is going to be given on october 13th 2018 but it's going to be um Daniel from, from Brazil presenting at Lambert Church based upon the prediction of the 126 days, which he thought Parminda or Tess or somebody would be presenting time setting. He's presenting time setting. And it's kind of interesting in that study. He never mentions the date November 9th. I always thought that was odd. Um, but uh, he's, he's talking about time setting. And uh, that's where I'm going to count the 391 and a half days to November 9th, 2019. So, then we're going to have the camp meeting. That's going to start October 16th, I believe. Um, and I'm going to uh, have two presentations, two slots uh, prepared for that, where I'm going to do a presentation on the week of Christ, two presentations. And then I'm given um, on October 14th, um, I do a Sunday morning presentation. So that's two weeks before October 28th. I do a, a Sunday morning presentation in which um, – it's called Some Calculations, I believe, is the title of the presentation. I show this 391 and a half. Parminder's there. And then he gives, he, he gets me two more spots at the camp meeting uh, to present this. And I end up with another 10-minute spot with Parminder later on, too. So I do basically five presentations at the camp meeting. The last one being on, on the Sabbath, just 10, 15 minutes um, of Parminder's presentation. So Parminder appears to uh, support this 391 and a half uh, calculation. So then um, October 22nd, so the camp meetings ends the 20, 21st, we have the baptism. Um, and then on the 22nd, I'm back in Edmonton for court date. And then I'm back on the 23rd. And in that period of time there, uh, so the 23rd is going to be five days before the 28th. Uh, there starts a major attack on um, what I had presented on the 391 and a half. And Jeff is strongly supporting it. And uh, Bronwyn is uh, attacking it. So we have that happening at that time. So while I'm gone, they're going to have some meetings. I get back and I find there's this whole mess going on about this. Now, so on October 28th, now, uh, George Siemens can actually do the, the Sabbath sermon at Lambert Church on the 27th. 
And then um, Jeff is going to do a morning study. Now, I put that morning study on the YouTube page. Um, and so it's just recently been put up. I can't do for some reason the transcript that isn't there yet. I'm not sure why. Um, I don't know if that takes time for the transcript to be available, but uh, it's a lot easier if I can search the transcript. Um, but I'm, I'm going to try to see if that shows up later. Now, he's going to be talking at the beginning of the video about a study that a Bronwyn did. And Bronwyn is going to do this study where she looks up October 13th in Ellen White's writings, all of the things that she wrote on October 13th. And it, it's very, very enlightening. So Jeff's going to start out with that. And then he's going to address a, a study where it's talking about uh, the tribes of Israel and their names. And, and so there's going to be some stuff that come from that. But that date is marked with this word times. Right. So if we go from 9-11, we count 6,256 days. It's going to bring us to this date. Right. OK, so it's a little bit um, still a lot of little things that we have to think about with this. Um, and that we have to look at and examine. Um, but the idea here is we have this. Um, this other date that shows up that's connected with our history. We want to know well, whatever was presented on that day, does it have a significance? Does it have a significance to us understanding this? And so I haven't looked at the whole video yet. I do remember the presentation when Jeff did it. Um, and uh, now the other thing that we did is we looked at uh, this word that's translated and in those. So this word, um, um, uh, is an interesting Hebrew word. And now Strong's, when he attaches a number to a particular word in scripture, so he's saying there's a Hebrew word that's being used there and in his lexicon, right? And then he's going to attach a Strong's number. He's not always consistent. We, we've noticed some of those things. Um, and, and you'll see that sometimes uh, translations will actually attach a different strong number. Now, this is the scholar's gateway. Uh, this is one of the tools I use when I want to, to parse a word. It just means to look at all the different parts of it and see what they, what they are. So, for instance, if we're going to look at this word, um, uh, here, this word, there's the word ham, and it's here got a ha in front of it. So it's ha, 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 mem, ha, mem. Right? So the ha is just the definite article. It's the in front of the word. Now they have ham as being hot or sunburnt. Right? It's also a location. Right? Um, and then they have this word here, which is um, the word time. And you can see it's the word time is just two Hebrew letters, Aleph and Tav. But in this case, they have a Va in front of it, which is Vu, which is um, uh, just makes it a plural uh, noun, right? So it's part of the uh, prepositional uh way of looking at it. So it's talking about these, right? And then uh, times it's going to have, a, uh, and, that, and that could also be just the vav meaning and, so it could be and. In, the bet means in, uh, and then you have etim, so that just means it's pluralized, right? So this is a pluralized masculine uh, noun. And, and then we have this word, hot. Now, it could be translated, um, and, and in hot times or sunburn times, right? So instead of these. So that's how this guy seems to want to look at it. He's going to use the Strong's number, either 1990 or 1991. Now, if we do that, if we 
use, let's say, 1990, it's going to bring us two days earlier before April 10th, uh, uh, 2024. And what was the significance of that for those who were uh, following the study yesterday? Why would we think it's significant uh, April 8th instead of April 10th, 2024? What happens or what's going to happen on April 8th, 2024? Isn't that the first day of the first month? No, the April 10th is the first day of the first month. Okay. So we've got April 8th, 2024. And what's going to happen on that date? So Iran says a total solar eclipse. So he's the one who brought that up. Now, this solar eclipse is... 2,422 days after the solar eclipse that happened in 2017. So August 21st, 2017, there's this huge solar eclipse went across continental United States from coast to coast. And uh, then there's this one coming up in 2024. And these two they have a place where they cross. And I put on the video yesterday um, some information about uh, these eclipses. Um, and where they cross. So they're going to cross, they have this little square where the eclipses overlap. Uh, it's about, a, um, I can't remember, was it 187 or, anyways, so many square miles. Uh, it had something to do with July 18th. Maybe it's 1.87 square miles, um, something like that. I can't remember specifically what the unit was. Um, where people in, in that area, they're going to be able to see that if they were in that area, they'd see both eclipses. Assuming the weather's going to be good that day. Um, it is in April, you might get some rain, I don't know. But um, so anyway, we have these two eclipses. And then we looked at the eclipse in 1533 BC. So there's an eclipse in 1533 BC that we can then tie as a symbol. And it's going to be when the Israelites cross the, cross the Red Sea and the Egyptian army is destroyed and Sequinary Ta, uh, who's the Pharaoh, is going to be killed. And, and I, I put some information in the comment, uh, not the comments, but the information section of yesterday's video. So people who want to look at that history in Gerard Gertot's, um, uh, writing where he deals with, uh, the Exodus and uh, the evidence is for placing the Exodus in 1533 BC and connecting this pharaoh, Sequinary Ta, to this eclipse. And the significance of seeing this total solar eclipse, it crosses um, where they cross the Red Sea. It's it's going to be total about a half an hour before sunset. That means, hey, Theodore. Yeah. I don't know if this might have anything to do with it, but the diagram you showed us about the where it crossed, came across, that runs right there at the Mississippi River, don't it? I don't know. I, I I'm not sure where where it ends or. Anything. Well, the reason I brought it up is that's a fault line right there, right in there somewhere or another. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Um, all I know is that the main thing about the eclipse, these eclipses, is that it connects us to uh, to the king of the south, right? So Egypt is the king of the south. It connects us back to this history of the Exodus. So there's a lot of things that come together just by looking at this this word in in Hebrew and and then connecting it. So if I'm going to do that. Um, so let me share the screen here again. So if I was going to move it to April 10th, from, from April 10th, I'm going to use instead of this um, H1992, I'm going to use H1990. That brings me to April 8th. And this is this American clip. So I'm just going to put that in there. So... <clears throat> So we have that eclipse. And that eclipse ties us to the solar eclipse in 1533. 
So, so we have a lot of things that, and the reason why we look at this, because we already understand what Daniel chapter 11, verse 14 is talking about. We reviewed the pioneer understanding of this on how we understand that it's Rome that establishes the vision. And then we're saying that in our time, that this verse is bringing us to this period of time. And at first I looked at April 10th. That's not to have anything to do with the election or anything. I know it has the first day of the first month. So that's that's important as a symbol. But if we bring it to April 8th, it brings us to this eclipse. And so that ends up making the total 8,246 8, days instead of 8,248 days. That's an inclusive count to April 10th. It'd be an inclusive count to April 8th as well. So let's go back to this October 28th day. So this October 28th day, right, we're going to have uh, this video. And it is, it is sort of when all this stuff happens and Jeff is going to basically be reviewing this. It's a summary of what had happened, uh, since the camp meeting the week before. So that week after the camp meeting. And, um, basically it's, it's an endorsement, I guess, of the 391 and a half. He did some studies on that previously. So in these, uh, these videos that are done at the School of the Prophets, um, uh-huh. in 2018, and I just gotta find this again. Okay. So when we deal with what happens on this disc, they're gonna have, so on October, 22nd in 2018. Um, so I'm just looking here on the calendar and replace this. I, I find this a little bit odd. So I guess they had the camp meeting, um, like the last day was the 21st. So on October 22nd, uh, they don't actually have a, a meeting at the School of the Prophets for some reason. I'm not sure why. So they're going to have one on the 15th, the day before the camp meeting. And at least what I have on the hard drive is the 23rd. So, so I'm going to be in, um, Edmonton on the 22nd. I guess I remember I, I ended up leaving Saturday night. I drove to the airport. Um, so I'm trying to think how that worked. I flew it on the 21st, got to Edmonton. Went to the courthouse and then I flew out on the morning of the 23rd. So on the morning of the 23rd and then I got back on the 24th. So I'm trying to figure out. I know that anyway, from that time, they were, I'd have to watch the videos to figure out which one I show up at. Um, I have a feeling I flew it on the 23rd. I get there the 24th. So uh, whether it got there the 24th at the night, I can't remember which day I, ended up showing up at the meeting. But anyway, while I was gone, on the 23rd and the 24th, the topics are going to be the 391 and a half. Those are going to be the topics on the morning studies. So it doesn't look like they're going to have anything but the morning studies after the camp meeting. They have a prayer meeting. Um, so that's going to be uh, the Tuesday, the Wednesday, and they have a prayer meeting that night on the 24th, and they're going to discuss the 391 and a half. And then on Thursday in the morning, they're going to have a study on 391 and a half. And then in the afternoon, they're going to have a study on the 391 and a half. And then on the 28th, so they won't have a study on Friday. And they're going to have the Sabbath sermons going to be George Seaman uh, at Lambert. And then, um, and then on the 28th, that's going to be the summary, right? So that's the video that I uploaded was the summary. So in that period of time, in that week, they're going to be discussing this 391 and a half. And then on the Sunday morning, they're going to be doing the summary. And that's going to be 6,256 days after 9-11. Okay? Does that make sense to people? Why we're doing that? So we're going to look at that. We're not going to look at it right now. I'm going to look at it next uh, next week because I'm going to have time to go over over these videos. So is that significant that it marks this October 28th date as this 
midway point of this diagram. It's not the exact midway, but it's it's going from from 9-11 to October 28th, 2018. Is that significant in us understanding these other dates, first day of the first month and then April 8th, where we're going to have this eclipse? Or is that just happening to be an arbitrary date that we ended up on? It should have some significance, yes. Okay. And, and, and I think specifically because of the things that are discussed at that meeting, which I didn't watch the whole video. I just watched the beginning part of it, but I remember it. And of course, it's a summary of that. And so there's going to be references to things in that video that I think are going to be pertinent in understanding this application to our time. Now, we're, we're, we've been making this application of Daniel chapter 11 to our lines, right? To things that we have already established. And we're showing that those things are correct. So now we have this rise of the papacy, right? In our time. And so we have the North and the South. So what does the papacy have to do with this battle between the King of the North and the King of the South? So we know that in 1989, it's, it's relevant. How is it relevant here when we're dealing with 2018 and this period from 9-11 to April? What is this illustrating for us? Can we, can we figure this out? Any mathematicians who notice anything about these spans of the time as well? Okay, what's the ratio between 6256 and 1992. Okay, you got 3.18. How do you, how do you get that? 0.318, Karen. You take this 1992 and divide it by 6256. Okay, what if we divide 6256 and divide it by 1992? You get 3.14. Okay, so you get pi. Right. <laughs> okay. It, and 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 it, it's you know it's hard to get pi exactly from any two numbers. Like the lowest numbers that you can get pi up from is if you take twenty two divided by seven. Right. You're going to get three point one four two eight five eight seven. Right. So so if you take this number. Uh, 6256 and you divide it by 22, you get 284.3636, et cetera. And if you take um, 1192 and you divide it by 7, you get um, oops, 1992 divided by 7. You're going to get a symbol, similar number. It's going to be 3.8457. Now, we also had two other Hebrew numbers. 1991 um, also was given in uh, the Scholar's Gateway, gateway and that's going to give you uh, 284.4287, so it's going to be closer. And if I take 1990, this one that leads us to uh, April 8th, and I divide it by 7, I'm going to get one that's slightly less, right? So if I wanted to find a precise number that I would need, it would be between 1990 and 1991, right? That would make this, this perfect ratio between, between 22 divided by seven. Now 22 divided by seven, remember we have those 70 year periods in that 220 years from uh, 677 to 457. So if you take 220 divided by seven, you get pi roughly, right? Um, there is no actual whole numbers that will produce pi, right? So, um, uh, it's, uh, so you'd have to use some kind of decimal to produce pi. Anytime you use pi, you'll never get, you know, whole numbers if you're, if you're using whole numbers, uh, to multiply it by, right? So anyway, does that make sense to people? So the fact that this is connected to pi, um, What's the significance of that? So um, I'm going to put that information here in this slide. 
So what does that mean? So I get this, this connection to pi. Okay. Um, Angela says pi equals paneum. Okay. So that is, if we're going to spell it in Greek, it's going to start with the letter pi. Okay. Anything else? Now we know that pi itself is a little more precise than this, but this is pretty close because pi is 3.14159. This is 3.142139. So it's slightly more than pi, but it's pretty close. I mean, that's pretty interesting that, and that's using, if I'm going to use H6256 divided by H1991 equals, I mean, even if I use H1992 or H1990, it's still going to give me a really close approximation to pi, but we've had all three of those numbers. So I'm going to take the, the mean there and 1991 between 1990 and 1992, right? So, so we get this number, which is approximately pi. Just trying to see if I can get that approximate symbol here. Ah, oh, here it is. Never mind. I think it's this one. There we go. So it's approximately pi. Okay, so we got pi there now. So, so we can relate it to this ratio between uh, 220 and 70, right? So we can relate it to that 220 years. Also, we have in the story of Joseph, 22 years from his dream to its fulfillment and the periods of seven years. So we can even take the story of Joseph and find pi, okay? 22 divided by seven. Now, I've also found pi other places. I found it in a, the ratio between uh, the period from 473 BC to the Sunday law and the period from 473 BC to 1700 years to uh, May 7th, uh, 2021, or not May, March 7th, 2021. And that also has this relationship of pi. So what does pi represent as a symbol? Just think. Uh, mathematics. What does it symbolize? So it represents a circle, right? That's where we get it from. It's a relationship between the radius of a circle to its circumference or also to its uh, um, area, different calculations for that. So pi gives us that. And what is a circle symbolically? What does it represent? It represents infinity. An infinity, yes, I agree. Okay, infinity, yeah. Okay, um, it represents time. Why, why does a circle represent time? How, how did the ancients measure time? With a sundial. Okay, with a sundial. Well, yeah, they could use a sundial. They could just also measure uh, other ways to measure the movements of the celestial objects to represent time. But the sky is a circle, right? The year... They have what they call the return of the year in the spring, right? They understand that time happens in this circular pattern because that's what they see in the sky. And, and so we know that 360, for instance, the number of degrees that we have in a prophetic year or, or the number of days in a prophetic year are the same number of degrees in a circle. And that's not accidental. That has to do with the nature of time. So, so it, it has to do with measuring time. And so we are measuring time here with this word times and in those times, right? So we're, we're taking this, we're measuring this time, and we find this ratio in this, these two numbers, 6256 and 1992 or 1191 or 1990. So all of those are going to give us a, a, a number that approximates very closely pi from all practical um, purposes, 3.14, all of them will produce 3.14. They have varying um, digits after that decimal point, uh, but up to a, a hundredths, a hundredths place, right? 
so so this represents pi. So we have pi here. Um, and we have a circle. We have time. So we're saying it gives us these dates, October 28th, 2018, if we start at 9-11, and it gives us April 8th or April 10th, 2024. And we say it, it relates to this time. So when it talks about in those times, it's going to talk about the king of... Um, Right, so it's going to talk about in those times there shall many stand up against the king of the south, so against Egypt. Now, what about the many? This number, many, Arab. Right. I mean, we run into this word a lot. It's a very, very common word in Hebrew. If you look here, here is, you know, all the times it's translated, all the different words it's translated as, lots of different words. Right. It can be translated as great. Mostly it's translated as many, but it's 269 times the Bible. So uh, the number itself, 7227, is that significant in any way? Beside it being a mirror? Okay, it's a mirror. It's chiastic, right? So that's that's the first thing we would notice with that number. Okay. Now, the other thing I usually do with the number is I just divide it by 365 and a quarter to figure out how long it is. So if I multiply it by 365 and a quarter, I'm going to get that it's 19 years, 0.78, right? So it's, it's a little under uh, 20 years. Okay, is that at all significant? Is that about the time of the metonic cycle? Well, metonic cycle is 19 years, you know, almost precisely, right? So, um, so it's longer than a metonic cycle. Um, now specifically, if we want to get it down to the number of days, it's going to be 19 years and 287 and a quarter days. Now, if we did it as, uh, prophetic years, it'd be 20 prophetic years. And I believe uh, 27 days, right? So almost a month longer than 20 prophetic years. Now, I've looked at it a lot, I mean, because I've run into this number many, many times. So um, try to figure out, is it, you know, some span of time in our, our lives? Now, it's going to bring us to uh, here, do this, right? Um so if we go to November 9th, 1989, and you count that number of days, it's going to bring you to August 23rd, 2009. So it doesn't bring us anywhere in particular that, that I know of of any significant date. If you go to 2001, which would be uh, an important date in our lines, um, and you get to September 11th, and you count seven 227, it's going to bring you to 2021, to June 25th, 2021. So it brings us into our history if we start at 9-11, but it doesn't bring us to anything that I know is significant, right? Um, if I did an inclusive count, it would be uh, the 13th of Sivan, which would be June 24th, 2021. Uh, the only thing interesting about that date is the Mayan date. The last two digits are 8, 11, and 7. So you got 11 and a 7 there, which represents July 18th. Um, uh, so, and then you have, of course, 1, 8, 7. You have the, the ones doubled, but, you know, with 11. But anyway, it has those digits of so July 18th. But I don't know anything that particularly happens on June 24th, 2021. You know, it's, it's a date just kind of in, you know, it's going to be past March 27th, 2021, um, three months past that, right? So, um, but anyway, those are the things that we kind of look at. We say, does this have any significance? Now, and now why do I bring this up? So it says, uh, there shall be many that stand up. So in those times, there shall be many. So, is the word many, it's a common word, is 
it doesn't give us anything that that I can see that's solid other than it's having this chiastic structure and that it's it's you know it's almost 20 years so do I ignore it do I just say well that's just one of the words in that line what do I do I don't see that it can be ignored okay so so what do we do with it what other tools can we use to analyze this? Yeah, that's the question. What verse is this in the Bible? <laughs> well, it's Daniel 11, verse 14. No, I, I recognize that. Oh, what verse is it in in the order of all the verses? Correct. Okay, so if we go to the King James Bible Indexer, so this is a tool that Iran has created for us. And we go to Daniel chapter 11, and we go to verse 14. Um, it's going to tell us that um, the Bible verse is 22051. The reverse Bible verse is 9052. They've got the reverse. The book verse is 313. The reverse book verse is 45. Lexum is six seven nine seven five. Um, so we know that that's fifty five days past twenty three hundred months is six seven nine two zero. So we had already looked at that a little bit. So what else can we do? Uh, the Bible chapter is eight six one. The verse Bible chapter is three twenty nine. It's got the sums, the gematria of it as well. Okay, so any any significance there? Reverse book verse, I think, has the has the greatest symbol. Uh, Forty five. Yeah. Yeah. So that's just if you go to the end of Daniel count. This is the forty fifth last verse, right? So it gives us forty five. But but we have lots of symbols. Yes, One we is, do. We have the reverse book number is 27. So if we take that and we consider that this is 7227, which is a mirror, and especially when you're looking at a reverse book number, I mean, just the book of Daniel itself um, has that symbol to it, right? Being, uh, um, or is that the book number? Pardon me. The book number is 27, not the reverse book number. So it's the 27th book of the Bible. And so if we do it as uh, we look at that 27, we can see that 7227 is a mirror. Right. right. Just the book of Daniel itself has that symbol of 27, I guess, it being the 27th book. And so that word in that book uh, is significant. That is the reversed uh, book verse is the 45th, and it's the 313th, a book verse. I still think 313 is also a mirror, and it's a mirror of the number 13, rebellion. But it also has 31 in it, and 31 is the cross, which is also the center of a chiasm. Now, now these things, of course, become a little bit obscure. They're not really solid things. That, you know, there's lots of little coincidences that could happen with numbers. Um, but we're just saying that um, these verses uh, have, and these words have these symbols that we can attach. But the question is, what do we do with this? What do we do? What is this telling us? Um, I'm just going to put in this six nine six seven nine seven five number. Uh, that's not right. Start here. No, I got to start on, pardon me, go back all the way to Millerite history for this one. So if we start on April 19, and we count 67975, that's going to bring us to May 29th. That's the date, I thought, in 2030. So the 25th day of the second month. So <clears throat> that's going to give us a 252 as a symbol. And I just wanted to put that one in there. I need to save that. 
I need to say this. Okay, so we're building we're building a structure, we're connecting things together, right? We're connecting uh, these different symbols that we find in this verse. Uh, if we go to twenty thirty, you can also put that in there. First day of the first month there, and then we're going to go um, back here. So this is that date that's coming up. That's the first day of the first month in 2024. You can see I'm starting to get a chart here of all these different numbers. So we know this 14,757. That's going to be um, uh, certain years is going to produce that one. And, and then we just need these other dates. So we got, there's the 6256. There's the 191. It's a cardinal count. Okay, do that April 10th. I know it's a lot of numbers here, but we, we see these numbers are produced by these uh, Hebrew numbers. So these these are, are symbols that we have. You can see 8247, because that's an inclusive count of 8248 right here. That's those two numbers together. It's counting back from that date. See what I get. Okay, so it doesn't give me anything. Okay, so there's something interesting. Okay, so June 22nd, 2010. Now, that's just June 22nd, right? So if I count from June 22nd, 2010, 7227 days, it brings me to April 5th, 2030. So I'm just going to go back. Now, what's the significance of June 22nd, 2010? There is no significance in 2010 that I know of, but it's one year to the date before Jeff receives $165,000 to start the School of the Prophets. So at least it's a symbolic date connected with that history. Now, if I count back from that date, it brings me to Stephen's birthday in 1994. So I'm just going to put that in there. That's with the word many. So if I take the word many, so what I'm doing is I'm attaching of the word many to the word um, stand up. So I'm taking the word stand up, which is 5975. So it says in those times, right, there shall many stand up. So the many standing up is this period of time, which is um, 5975 plus 7227 which is 13,202 days, and divided by 365.25, it gives me 36 years and 36 years and 53 days. So that's that's why we get that from 2030. We go back. It gives us that June 22nd date in 2010. You go back again. That word many is going to connect to Stephen's birthday in 1994. So, so but again, in, yeah. in history as well, your connection with June 22nd would bring us back to the Battle of Raphia. Right, as a symbol, yeah. And the Battle of Pydna. Yeah, and of course, 622, that's going to be uh, the year in which um, you're going to start. It's the 600, 622 a.m. That's going to be uh, the birth of... Um, Saint Muhammad? No, no. Well, no. Enoch, right? 622 a.m. I don't know Right? And then you're going to have 622... Uh, AD, that's going to be the start of the Islamic calendar, right? And that's going to be on like the, uh, the calendar starts at sunset on July 18 and 622, um, AD. That's the Islamic calendar, right? So, um, so the 622 BC also is connected with that, uh, Passover of Josiah, the 622 BC. And then 
1533, you have the truce of Constantinople. On June 22nd? Yes. That brings together the two symbols, the 1533 BC and right. the June 22nd. Okay. Okay, so that's interesting. So, so anyway, we have these symbols um, that are all being tied together. And the, the question is, how do we interpret those symbols? So one thing we always have to remember about symbols is they never count contradict the plain understanding of things. Now, one interesting thing by time 1533 to 622, what's 1533 minus 622? It's 911. Very interesting. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, so again, we have all of these symbols that we've been using, November 9th, September 11th, so 9-11, 11-9, you want to look at it, and 1533. So we've already been discussing these symbols. And, and we're just analyzing a verse. We understand. We, we, this verse is well attested to. We know that this is what's going to happen when Rome when many people stand up against the king of the south, Egypt, Rome exalts itself to establish the vision. Right? And and they do so not it doesn't it's not just that they happen to do this and it establishes the vision. They exalt themselves to establish the vision. And my understanding there is that this this establishing of the vi a vision is, I shouldn't say it's intentional on the part of Rome, but their actions are, are something that has to be understood. Now, the vision there is going to be the phazone, right? So that's going to be the prophetic mirror, right? That's going to be the 2520. So Rome is doing this to establish the vision of the two twenty five twenties, which brings us to you know that period of Millerite history. And we know that when they exalt themselves and it says they shall fall, that fall is not the fall that happens then. That fall is referring to the end. Seventeen ninety eight, they have a fall, right? They also have a fall um in five, you know, in that period. So pagan Rome has a fall, as well as papal Rome has a fall as well as modern Rome as a fall, right? So it's pointing to all of those falls of Rome. And and we looked at that word, the word fall means to totter or waver through weakness of the legs, especially the ankle, by implication to falter, stumble, faint, or fall. So we say, um, and it often means to be cast down, be decayed, right, feeble, um, so we can see that this is referring to that image of Daniel chapter 2 is in an in a illustration of how Rome falls, right? How these kingdoms fall. So, the, so this is the vision that they exalt themselves or stand up, or I guess the word is to arise, to stand up. That word establishes the word that's translated to stand up, 5975, right? It's the one that added where it says um, uh, they shall stand up. Many shall stand up, right? That same stand up. So to stand up the vision is if you're going to translate it in the same sense, not to establish, but to stand up the vision. But they shall fall. And if we think about the standing up the vision, we could think of about a setting up of the Sunday law, right? But it's going to fall. We could think about not just Daniel chapter 2, but Daniel chapter 3. Because he's going to set up the, this um, statue on the plains of Jura, right? So, so we are understanding that this is uh, Rome exalting itself. Now, historically, when we've made this application to our time, we would say this is when Rome comes in prior to 1989 and connects with the United States to overthrow the King of the South, right? And here in this case, of course, uh, they're standing up to, to stop 
Egypt from being totally destroyed, right? Because they don't want Syria, you know, the Seleucid Empire to become too powerful. Um, so they're supporting Rome. And um, so in all of this, we have the Battle of Raphia. Here we have the Battle of Paneum. that's then going to be talked about. So the king of the north shall come, cast of the mount, take the most fenced cities. The arms of the south shall not withstand. Neither is chosen people. Neither shall there be any strength to withstand. But he that cometh against him to do according to his will, this is Rome, right? And none shall stand before him. Again, you have that word stand. And he shall stand, again, that word stand, in the glorious land, which by his hand shall be consumed. And, and we know that we, this all leads us to Daniel chapter 11, you know, verse 40, 41, right? The time of the end shall the king of the south push at him. And the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind. So the king of the south here is not Turkey or, or not Egypt. And the king of the south is, the uh, king of the north is not Turkey, right? Even though Uriah Smith has that view, the pioneer view was wrong on this point. Okay. But we know that that's going to be 1989. And he shall enter into the glorious land and many countries shall be overthrown. These shall escape. Now, when you look at that word overthrown, it's that same word, which means to totter or waver. So, so the Daniel 11 verse 14 and Daniel 11 verse 41 are really the same history, but this is not in the time of Greece. This is in our time, right? And it's not an application of these verses. This is where these verses are pointing to. They're pointing to the time in which we live. Daniel 11, verse 41. But Daniel 11, verse 14 also is talking about that time. Even though it's, it's actual application as a prophecy is referring to what happens with, in the time when Rome comes to overthrow Greece, right? It, it becomes the dominating power. So if we're going to connect that to our history, which we can here because we already have this history, we can always already take these verses. So in our lines where we're attaching, we're attaching it to a Sunday law in our history, which is typical of the Sunday law that's going to come, right? So we know we're in, we're not to here yet, right? We don't have the Sunday law yet. Right. This is this is all of this history from 1989 to the Sunday law. Correct. So when you when you look at the Hebrew here in 1141 and the Hebrew in 1114, you see a lot of similar things. The word hand is mentioned. Right. Many is mentioned. Overthrown is mentioned. The glorious land. Right. All of these things are here in this verse that are in verse 14. Right? So these verses uh, go together, right? You're going to see the many. You're going to see the, the, um, uh, the, the hand. Oh, that's going to be in, I don't see hand here in this verse. Um, but you see the fall, right? It's going to be in verse 16 that you're going to get the hand. And the land and the glorious land. So, so not verse 14, but verse 16. So these verses all go together, right? And so you can take this history. I guess you could even go back and you can just say this history from Daniel 11, verse 11 to Daniel 11, verse 16 is Daniel 11, verse 40 to 45. Can we say that? That would right? be an interesting application. Yeah, so if we do that application, one of the things, the king of the south comes against the king of the north. That's 1798, right? Daniel 11, 11, if you're going to take Raphia, you're going to take this as Daniel 11, verse 40 to 45. Raphia is going to parallel 1798. Correct? That's the king of the south defeating the king of the north. All right. When the king of the north returns and sets forth a multitude greater than the former, we're going to have verses that connect us with Daniel 11, verse 40b, 
all the way to verse 45. So that's going to be 1989 to the Sunday law. Now, have we made the application in this way in the past? Have we looked at Daniel 11 as Raphia and then the Battle of Paneum as a parallel to 1989? Have we done that? I don't I think, but yeah, I don't think we have in that direct way, but I think that that makes the most sense. That if we're going to take this history, um, we can then tie 1798 to Raphia and 1989 to Paneum, and they, they become types then, right? So we, we, we sort of skip this step, but this seems like a logical step. Now, I want to get back to what you were talking about. You're talking about uh, a battle of Constantinople in 1533. I didn't talk about a battle. I talked about a treaty. Oh, a treaty. Okay, the Treaty of Constantinople. So it's called the Truce of Constant Truth, Truth, Truce of Constantinople in 1533 A.D. Correct. Now it says here that it's signed on July 22nd, not June 22nd. Well, I'm looking at a different a different situation. It's just saying that June 22nd. So. Yeah, okay, so I'm just, I was looking at Wikipedia. Yeah, so yeah, I have here June 22nd as well on another site. So they have the Truce of Constantinople. June 22nd, uh, Ferdinand of Austria and Ottoman Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent signed peace treaty. Okay. Right. I'm just going to see if I can find out more about that. That's on this day. Yeah, so there seems to be a sort of a little bit of a disagreement about this. I'm not sure why. But the interesting thing is we, we found something that I ne never noticed before. I'm sure somebody else noticed it. That if you take 1533 and you subtract 622, you get 911. Right. And that, that's significant because we already have 1533 as a symbol. We already have 622 as a symbol. And that they produce 911 is is significant so we don't have to get this treaty to be signed then it, it means it's helpful as a symbol even without the treaty but i just want to uh, the thing is these treaties are important right right um, i've got a document here which i'm trying to find i can find that date yeah, so they, um, that's kind of weird. So they're saying about this treaty, <laughs> it's a symbol that's interesting. So they say it was signed in, on June 22nd. But this treaty was signed on June 22nd, 1533, but not written, was the first official treaty signed between Austria and the Ottoman Empire. According to the treaty, Ferdinand would leave, uh, Ferdinand left his rights on Hungary and would accept Zapolia as Ottoman's territory. Also, Ottoman Empire would accept the Ferdinand's domination of North Hungary, wanted to pay for them uh, 30,000 30, pieces of gold. Hmm. Now, this document's a little bit hard to read because it's it's translated using some kind of translation program from another language. Okay. Uh, think translated from Romanian. Um, so some of the English doesn't make sense. So that's why this treaty was signed June 22nd, 1533, but not written. Uh, I'm not sure what that means. Uh, obviously, I think they would have written it before they signed it. You would uh, hope so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and so a lot of this is in, uh, yeah, so this is stuff that generally we don't deal with much in the West because this has to do with, like one is a paper called The History of Azerbaijan, right? So people looking at this, their interest in this date is different than our is interest. Another paper, uh, Balkan since 1453. Okay, um, so try to send that information. What I'll do is I'll, I'll put a link to some of this stuff in the video description. Anyway, our time is up. So we got kind of a little bit carried away.
So uh, I'll put this in the video description. I'll put some stuff there uh, that people can link to some of these dates. Uh, but it's pretty profound, I think. So uh, let's close in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study this morning. And we just continue to ask that you can help us in our day-to-day -day lives and in our personal study. We ask for your Holy Spirit to continue to teach us and uh, we pray for a blessing upon this video and the information in it, uh, that it can uh, reach those who need to hear the things in it. Um, and we thank you for all the things you are doing. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.